Nigel Torboys from Terumo uh, Chairs ABHI's Public Policy Group. Nigel, thanks for joining us today. Um, the first question which we always ask uh, during these uh, discussions is, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background as it is relevant to your leadership of this group for us. Well, thank you, Richard, and it's good to speak with you this morning. Um, I've been involved in the medical device industry for the whole of my career, and in the last 12 years I've been involved in public affairs and um, that started um, in in the in the noughties so to speak um, and it started within the European sphere and um, I joined um, the public affairs group in in MedTech Europe and um, I was vice chair of that group for two sessions and then I uh, became the chair of that group for two sessions and I decided to pass on the mantle and because of Brexit, because of um, the interests of Terumo in the United Kingdom, I decided that that if um, if the industry would wanted me to lead the public affairs group in uh, ABHI, I thought I could bring some of my experience to um, the group. And that experience is in the European side and combining that with my knowledge of the UK healthcare system, my experience in advocating within the European of uh, the UK parliamentary system, as well as in the European system. And I think that blend of experience helps me to provide some leadership along with the uh, secretariat for the group in the UK. Great, thanks, Nigel. And uh, just thinking, quite a lot of people who are, are listening to this and watching this uh, will do different sort of functions across the industry. Probably got very little idea what a public affairs function actually looks like for the sector. Maybe just uh, give us a sense of what the uh, what what the day job involves, uh, some of the work you get involved in, and indeed some of the opportunities for people who are thinking of expanding their experience uh, uh, from their current roles. Well, the first thing we need to make sure that in public affairs we are relevant. That is number one, and I'm a very strong believer that we need to be. Uh, working very close with our business colleagues to help them meet their business goals. And if we don't do that, we are we will soon become not relevant. And so so whenever someone is moving into a public affairs position, well, first of all, first of all, think how you would support your business colleagues to help them meet their business goals. Now, that is all sometimes quite complex in a public affairs role because within public affairs, things move quite slowly. And in the business world, they want or often want results rather quickly. Pieces of legislation can take a number of years to, to happen. And so we need to set up good milestones, good KPIs that we are able to help manage and monitor our our business. Now, what does it mean and what do we do on a daily basis? Well, a lot of it is the first it starts with monitoring what is happening. So a lot of our time is monitoring, monitoring what is happening on the pieces of legislation, monitoring. Also, I find it's important to monitor what is happening generally on the business because that helps us to combine the legislation also with a business knowledge, and I think that's very important. Then often what we do within government affairs, which is not so different than many other functions, we map the process. And if there is a change in the legislation that is upcoming, we map. We map the timing of that process. We also map who all the stakeholders are within the process. And some of those are political stakeholders, such as members of parliament or members of the House of Lords, but also the, the civil servants that are involved in the process, the Office of Life Science, for example, because they can have a key input into how the changes of the legislation can happen. And often areas that we sometimes forget, which are critically important, of course, for a medical device business, are patients, 
and patient organ patient organizations when we're starting to develop a a campaign about advocating for changes in a piece of legislation or um, having legislation that is better fitting the industry or a specific company don't forget that the biggest impact is going to be for those patients and um, understanding patient needs and potentially discussing with patient associations about how changes of legislation will impact them is very, very important to do. And that helps us to bring that message, that communication, that story to the members of parliament who will make the uh, final changes and in, um, in the legislation. So one thing, don't come into government affairs if you think it's all having dinners and, um, and things like this. This is not the case. A lot of analysis, excellent communication, both written, but also um, verbal is critically important to this. And, um, and, and, and a very good understanding of the industry is really important. Good, thanks, Andrew. That's a really, really good overview. We, we sometimes get called lobbyists, don't we? And uh, someone said to me, lobbying, lobbying is a necessary activity in any democracy. And as you, and you pointed out really very lucidly there, that uh, if people are legislators, rule makers, lawmakers, uh, sit and uh, do things that impact on uh, on the way we do business, then I think it's quite legitimate for us uh, to get involved in those discussions and help shape those policies. And um, so, Back to the here and now then, Nigel, we're recording this early October 2021. Feels like there's an awful lot going on in that legislative space. Tell us a little bit about the work of ABHI's um, public affairs group at the moment, some of the priorities in the months ahead. Well, it, it is um, many of us that have been in government affairs for some time have seen a raft of legislation coming through on a European basis. Um, particularly the medical device regulation and the um, in vitro diagnostic regulation. And that's something that I personally was was involved in. Now, of course, we're seeing in the, um, the United Kingdom that um, there is a move away from the European legislation. And so we're starting to see that raft of legislation incre um, coming about in the UK. So a new medical device regulation, a new in vitro diagnostics regulation. So we're very much involved at the moment in the consultative process around these pieces of legislation. There will be a UK um, CA mark that will replace the UK, the, replace the CE mark in the United Kingdom from mid 2023. And that discussion with Office of Life Science, with legislators is starting to take, take place at the moment. So that is, let's say our nuts and bolts, our core aspect is working on those pieces of legislation. But that's not it, not just it. There are <clears throat> excuse me, other very important pieces of legislation that are starting or will be coming along. The second area is to have a look at other pieces of legislation that we will see that will, uh, where there is a divergence from EU legislation. And I think we will start to see areas such as REACH, which is a which is the environmental legislation that looks at hazardous substances and how those hazardous substances are used. That will be a piece of legislation that we will see revised in the United Kingdom. And that is something that as a public affairs group, we will be coming, uh, uh, we will be part of in the future. And also there are there are other pieces of uh, medical device or medical legislation, such as the blood and tissues and cells legislation, which may be more specialized, but a number of companies are involved in. And we will see those pieces of legislation also under revision in the, in the coming years. The final part that I want to mention, which I, in, in my opinion is going to have potentially a much 
the, some of the biggest impacts in the industry over the coming years and something that the public affairs group are starting to get involved in. And I think we will see that the public affairs group being involved like many other functions within medical device companies, and that is the area of sustainability. Um, we know that the NHS are driving a policy of a zero, zero carbon environment by 2045, but there are a lot of steps to get to that zero carbon environment. And we've seen that, that in the consultation process, that within procurement, there is a, the NHS see that there will, uh, there are big savings to be made on their route to carbon neutrality and medical devices and um, uh, so far account for around 10% of the carbon footprint of the NHS. So we are going to have to change the way we manufacture products. There will be a lot of pressure to do things at a particular speed and as a public affairs group we are starting to get a handle on how what type of legislation will be coming along in the future and how we can advocate to ensure that the speed that the NHS want to go, the speed that the legislators want to move is also in line with the speed that the industry can move at. That's great. Thanks, Nigel. So some big ticket items there and there. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, I think we're uh, we're three weeks, four weeks in, are we? Ten week consultation on the uh, on the UKCA bit, and mm -hmm. actually just in the in the last couple of weeks, we've we've created a uh, a fund from our board to try and support uh, companies on the sustainability journey, um, and we haven't even mentioned the procurement bill. We're expect to see in a raft mm -hmm. of other legislation. Yes to try and uh, improve uh, confidence in, in, in data sharing uh, and, and skills, the gender and everything else. Lots to go out. Nigel, thank you so much for your leadership of the group. I know this, <laughs> you, you open up the group on, on, on a regular basis to, to all our membership. Yes. Uh, I think we heard from the Office for Life Sciences last time talking about the uh, the, like, the newly, the recently commissioned Life Sciences mm -hmm. uh, So um, we look forward to seeing more of that and we look forward to catching up uh, in the months ahead on, on some of this really, really important uh, policy work you, you're leading for us. Yeah, well, look, thank you, Richard. And maybe just to end, I think something for particularly people that you mentioned that might be coming into a government affairs space Government affairs joins the dots and it, it is really important for government affairs to work with all the different functions, the regulatory function, the market access function, the commercial functions and government affairs has to work with all those different functions and it's, it's, it really is an exciting place to work because you have are working across those many different functions of the company. So you really can see how a company operates. And of course, I forgot operations as well, because we're often involved with the operations because in operations, we employ a lot of people. And of course, that is something that legislators are, are always interesting for talking with companies where there is a, a lot of employment. So if anyone is considering coming into this space, it certainly is a great space to be today. So thank you very much, Richard. Thanks, Nigel. It was a great advert for the uh, for the public affairs role in our okay. industry. Thanks again, and we'll we'll speak to you soon. Okay. Cheers then.